Hi guys! Today we're going to look at how to use Unity's job system to massively improve the performance of a game. By utilising the job system, we'll go from running at this really low frame rate to running smoothly like this. Before we start, we'd like to thank Vagon for sponsoring this video. Vagon provide remote access to superfast computers that are perfect for creatives who don't have a professional workstation. Even if you do have a good workstation, Vagon can be a useful additional resource for when you don't want to block your computer or when you're away from home. It's really simple to use. You just choose the spec you want and then in a couple of minutes you'll be ready to run a high performance computer straight from your browser. The great thing is that the performance and data are completely independent, so you can create the project on a lower spec machine and then upgrade it to something more powerful with a single click. We're going to be using Vagon in this video to show how the performance of a game can be affected by the number of cores the PC has. A link to their site can be found in the description. OK, we've currently got this scene with spiders that wander around. There's nothing complicated going on here. They simply change direction randomly and if they go off screen they turn around. Let's have a quick look at the script. The first thing it does is set a target direction. If the spider hasn't changed direction for a while, then a new random direction is set. Then it checks if the spider is still on screen. If it isn't, the target direction is reversed to bring it back on screen. Then the spider is rotated towards the target direction. The position of the spider is then updated to move it forward at the desired speed. Let's switch back to Unity and look at the frame rate. At the moment everything is running fine and the frame rate is well above 60. Let's stop the game and switch back to the script. Before we make any changes, if you'd like to follow along then a link to this project can be found in the description. Ok, at the moment the logic for the spider is very simple. Things could get much more complex than this though. For example, we could need to calculate a path that avoids obstacles. We're not going to do this now, but we'll simulate some expensive logic by adding a for loop. We'll loop 10,000 times. In here we'll just calculate the square root of 5,000. This obviously isn't doing anything useful, but it will mean there's more processing to do for each spider. Now let's save this and run the game to see what happens. It's definitely not looking happy now and the frame rate is really low. Let's stop the game and go over the problem. We ideally want our games to run at 60 frames per second. That means we only have 16.6 .6 milliseconds per frame to play with. We have to do all the logic and all the rendering in a very small amount of time. If we take longer than this, then the frame rate will drop. By adding more logic to the spiders, there is now a lot more to do each frame, and by default, Unity will run all the update logic in a single thread, so this means that the logic for each spider is called one after another. One solution to this is to use Unity's job system. The job system allows us to efficiently run logic, or jobs, on multiple threads, utilising the number of cores available. So, if we create a job containing all the spider logic, then we can process multiple spiders in parallel and improve the performance. Let's have a look at how to do this. We'll select the spider move script and duplicate it twice. We'll rename one of them spider job move. And we'll rename the other spider job. Let's double click to open the spider job script. This is going to be a job that contains all the logic for the spider, that we'll then be able to schedule to run in another thread. To make it a job, we need to add the Unity jobs namespace at the top. Then we'll change it to inherit from iJob rather than mono behaviour. We also need to change it from a class to a struct. And we'll change the name to spider job. Rather than the usual mono behaviour methods, a job just has a single execute method. 
let's change the update method to the execute method. We'll also need to make this public. So we want the job to execute all the same logic that we had before. It's not quite that simple though, as jobs aren't able to use any reference types, so we can't use the camera or the transform component for example. The job is also going to be stateless, which means it's not going to be able to retain values between frames for things like the target direction, so we're going to have to refactor this code a little. Let's start by deleting the camera field. We'll also delete the awake method, as this won't be called. Instead, we'll pass all the values we need in through a constructor for the job. We'll add a parameter for the target direction, one for the change direction cooldown, another for the speed, and one for the rotation speed. Then we'll assign the parameter values to the corresponding fields. Next, we'll go through the script and see what else we need to change. In this method, there are a couple of things we need to fix. Jobs can't access time.delta time, and they aren't allowed to use the random methods. We'll replace time.delta time with a field. We'll populate the value of this field from the constructor. To replace the random methods, we need to use the Unity Mathematics namespace. This gives us a new random class to use. We need to provide a seed value for this, that we'll also pass in through the constructor. We can then replace the random range calls with a call to next float. Next, we need to fix the errors in the handle off screen method. We can't use the camera, so we'll delete this line. Then we'll replace screen point and the width and height with fields. We'll add these to the parameters passed into the constructor. Next, we'll move on to the rotate towards target method. We need to replace time.delta time with the field. Also, we can't access the transform, so we'll need to pass the rotation value in. The final method to fix is set position. We don't have access to the up direction of the spider. We do know the rotation though, so we can calculate the up direction by multiplying vector 2 up by the rotation. Then we need to replace time.delta time again. We can't call translate, so instead we'll calculate the new position by adding to the existing position. The position will be a new field that we populate through the constructor. OK, so we've now fixed the script and got in all the values we need. The next thing to do is get the results out and onto the main thread. This isn't possible using standard data types. Instead, we'll need to use the Unity Collections namespace. 
This gives us access to a type called Native Array, which will allow us to set values in the job and access it from the main thread. We'll add a Native Array of type Float for the cooldown result. We'll add one of type Vector2 for the target direction. We'll add another for the position. And we'll add one of type Quaternion for the rotation. We'll initialize all of these through the constructor. Now we need to set values to these results. First of all, we'll set the target direction result after it's been calculated. Because this is an array, we need to specify an index position of 0. Next, we'll do the same for the change direction cooldown. Then we'll set the results for the rotation and position. That's it for the job. It takes the values we provide, does the required calculations and then gives the results. Let's save this and switch to the spider job move script. We'll rename this class Spider Job Move. Then we'll delete all the existing logic in the update method. And we'll create a new instance of our job to do the logic instead. We'll populate all the parameters in the jobs constructor. For the seed used by the job, we'll create a random number between 1 and 1000. We need to get the screen position using the camera world to screen point method. We can also get the screen width and height from the camera. Then we need all of the result arrays to pass into the job. We'll go back to the job and copy the result fields. Then we'll paste these into the spider job move script. We also need to add the Unity Collections namespace for this. Next, we'll initialize the arrays in the awake method. We'll specify that we only want the array to contain one value. We'll also set it to be persistent. This allows us to use the array across multiple frames. We'll do the same for the other three arrays. Then we'll finish creating the job. Next, we need to schedule the job to run. To do this, we'll need to add the Unity Jobs namespace at the top. Then we can call the Schedule method to schedule the job to run. This returns a job handle that allows us to keep track of the job. We'll add a field to store this. So now each spider will create a job to do its logic, and that job will run on a different thread. At some point we need to get the results of the job back onto the main thread though. Before we can do this, we need to wait for the job to complete. We still want to update the spider every frame, so we want the job to complete every frame. There wouldn't be much point in scheduling the job and then waiting for it to complete straight away, so instead we'll use the late update method.
In here, we'll call complete on the job handle to wait for the job to complete. So now the jobs for all the spiders will be scheduled in the update cycle. Then each of them will wait for completion in the late update cycle. Now the job has completed, we can make use of the results. First of all, we'll get the target direction. Then we'll get the cooldown value. Then we'll set the rotation of the spider. And finally, we'll set the position. That's pretty much it, we just need to do a bit of tidying up. Now that all the logic is being done by the job, we can remove all these redundant methods. The final thing we need to do is clean up all the native array fields. Because they implement iDisposable, we need to call dispose on them when the game object is destroyed. We'll add the onDestroy method and then dispose of all the arrays. OK, let's save this and switch back to Unity to try it out. We'll add the spider job move component to the spider prefab. Then we'll turn off the previous script and press play to try it out. We can see the frame rate is now much better. There's still one more simple change we can make to improve it even further. Let's stop the game and go to the spider job script. We're going to specify that we want the job to make use of Unity's Burst compiler. The Burst compiler translates your code to highly optimised native code and is primarily designed to work with the job system. The great thing is we can enable this with a single attribute. We'll need to add the Unity Burst namespace. Then we can add the Burst compile attribute to the job. And that's it. Let's save this and give it another try. Now the frame rate is even better. One final thing we'll do is use Vagon to show how the number of cores has an impact. Because the job system makes use of the number of cores, if we switch to this machine with a lot more cores then it should run even faster. Let's give it a try. Now we're running at an even higher frame rate. Let's stop this and switch back to using the original script. You can see that even using this super powered PC, without using the job system it can't cope. Hopefully this has really demonstrated the power of the job system. While it is powerful though, it shouldn't be used for everything. There is a cost to scheduling the jobs and transferring values to and from the main thread. This means the logic in the job needs to be complex enough to justify the cost. If you had lots of very simple jobs, then it may cost more to manage them than it does to just run the logic on the main thread. OK, that covers everything for this video, hope you found it useful. A big thank you to all our patrons, we really appreciate you helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Thanks very much to Vagon for sponsoring this video, a link to their site can also be found in the description. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments, and subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss the next one. Thanks guys!